We have a production system where part of the animals are in a dry lot, as you can see here, and part of the animals are under a compost barn. What we are seeing here is the prepartum. Well, in this particular case, this compost barn is managed with peanut shells. The compost lasts approximately one year, after which everything is renewed, usually managing around 120, 125 cows, 130, 135 heifers. We have a herd of heifers on one side and a herd of cows on the other, but has a separate business unit where that milk is processed in addition to purchasing from other establishments. This is where all the concentrates are stored. We call these cells, where we have a cell for each raw material. In conclusion, this establishment has dry cows, prepartum cows, and production cows. Welcome to the Santa Fe Agro Institute channel. We are in Villa Maria at a dairy farm with agronomist Diego. Welcome, Diego, and please introduce yourself. Well, my name is Diego Bertea. I am an advisor in the animal feeding sector. Here we are at the El Moncho farm, which is located in the main dairy basin of the Argentine Republic, specifically in the province of Córdoba, in the Villa Maria area. The idea was to see various productive systems, the most common productive systems we have today in Argentina, especially in this developing dairy basin, which is gradually growing, migrating from traditional systems to more intensive milk production systems. Particularly at this farm, we have a production system where part of the animals are in a dry lot, as you can see here, and part of the animals are under a compost barn. What we are seeing here is the prepartum. The prepartum is managed with a controlled energy diet, as it is called, where approximately 30% contains wheat straw, corn silage, soybean meal, and we are using a concentrate, a concentrate that provides the protein part along with the anionic part. This is a growing system. Today, only the milking cows are under the compost barn. At this particular farm, the prepartum does not have a barn. It is a dry lot system, and once the cow, after calving, goes to the barn, but if not, it is a dry lot system. There are other systems that have everything from prepartum to milking cows and dry cows all under a barn. This farm usually has between 430 to 450 milking cows throughout the year. Due to the current season, we have a more advanced lactation and most calvings will start from February next year. February, March, April, May and possibly until June, most calvings will be concentrated. And what is here? Where are we? At one point, we were in the pre-calving area. Once the cow calves, it comes to the barn here. This is a compost barn divided into two sections. On one side, we have the heifer herd, and on the other side, we have the cow herd. Once the pre-calving cow or heifer calves, it comes to the barn and is housed with the heifers. At certain times of the year, the fresh cow herd remains outside, especially in winter. And when the temperatures are very high, it comes inside the barn with the heifer herd. Why are we doing this? Because we have limited space the compost barn can accommodate around 250 to 260 cows, which is a limitation for this farm, considering it usually has between 430 to 450 animals in milking. Once the fresh cow period ends and the veterinarian gives the medical clearance, the heifer stays in the heifer section and the cow joins the cow herd. We have another dry lot system in front, which we can see here where all the cows with advanced pregnancies from the barn are moved, always respecting the number of cows in the barn. Once the cow completes its reproductive and productive cycle, it dries off and joins the dry cow herd. Is the diet here the same as over there? No, we are managing two diets, one for cows and heifers. At this time, the heifer herd has a diet aimed more at fresh cows and the third herd, which consists of cows with advanced pregnancies where the production curve starts to decline, has a diet with slightly more controlled energy. What are the most important phases you focus on in the cow? Phase 1, Phase 2, Phase 3, Phase 4, what are those phases? In terms of phases, Phase 1 would be the dry cow. I usually work a lot on the transition period, which is Phase 2, the pre-calving period, and Phase 3, 
the post-calving period. Depending on the system we are working with, in this case, the barn is a limitation. We have a certain number of cows available to be housed in the barn, so we have to manage the movement of animals between fresh cows, considering their production and pregnancy, especially moving them to the dry lot. How many feedings do you do per day? How many times do you serve the food? Here we are distributing the food twice a day, and in this period with higher temperatures, we sometimes distribute the food two or even three times a day to prevent the food from getting too hot. Here we can see that the barn has a cooling system in the feeding alley, which is currently programmed to start every 30 minutes and operates for five minutes each time. How is the heat stress here? How does it work? Is there a lot of it in the summer? How is it in Argentina? Well, particularly this year in the last. The heat has been quite strong. Today it is cool, but we had a rather challenging week with temperatures above 40 degrees. Compared to your climate, this is a drier climate, so we manage it better due to the lower ambient humidity. It gets very hot, but the heat is generally drier. Here, feeding is managed based on silages, mainly corn silage, and we also use alfalfa silage, alfalfa mega bales, or hay for forages always aiming for the best quality possible within the climatic conditions. Last year was quite dry, with very scarce rainfall, which affected the quality of the feed. For concentrates, we are working with cottonseed, ground corn and soybean meal. In some specific herds, such as the cow and heifer herd, we are also using protected soybean meal. How do you manage feeding when the price rises, when an input becomes more expensive? Well, currently, we are in a buy-sell price situation for raw materials, especially concentrates. The dairy industry here in Argentina relies heavily on byproducts derived from soybeans, and currently, due to economic issues, the price has increased significantly. Therefore, we have to adjust to manage the costs, which is not easy at the moment. How is the compost bedding managed here? Well, in this particular case, this compost barn is managed with peanut shells. The compost lasts approximately one year, after which everything is renewed. Last year, we typically used around 4.5 to 4.7 kilos of peanut shells per animal per day. The daily management of the barn involves two passes with a chisel plow and then a pass with a rotovator, done once in the morning when the cows go out for milking and later in the afternoon when they go out again. We take advantage of the barn being empty to perform this task. In the dry lot system during this period, we have a shading system where we also do a daily scraping of the corral. And in the shaded area, we use a chisel plow to loosen the bedding so the cows can rest comfortably. Here we are inside the barn. As we can see, I was telling you that once a year, usually in the winter months, all the bedding is removed. Everything we are seeing is incorporated as peanut shell substrate. The peanut shell is a byproduct of peanut grain processing. The peanut is harvested, the grain is extracted, and the remaining byproduct is the shell. This is used as substrate in this bedding. What we do is remove everything from the previous year, incorporate this substrate, and with the cow's manure and urine, the temperature increases, it ferments, and compost begins to form. This is not done with a single addition of shells. But as time goes by, as it ferments and the bedding lowers a bit, peanut shells are added, mainly to manage the moisture of the bedding. It also depends a lot on the humidity of the climate. The more humid it is, the more shells are added compared to today, a dry climate like we are having these days. Here in this barn, as we mentioned earlier, we have a herd of heifers on one side and a herd of cows on the other, where we manage around 12 square meters per animal on average. Regarding heifers, we incorporate a few more animals, usually managing around 120, 125 cows, 130, 135 heifers. Heifers incorporate a few more animals because they are slightly smaller and produce less effluent, allowing more animals per square meter. What's the problem with the bed being wet for you? The problem with wet bedding is that it starts to get quite muddy, which stresses the cows. If I exceed the number of cows per square meter, it doesn't manage the effluent well, the moisture in the bedding increases significantly, generating a lot of mud 
and the cows suffer some stress due to that mud. All this leads to problems, such as mastitis, in addition to affecting production. A cow in the mud won't rest properly, and therefore production will also be lower. What is the average production of these animals? At this moment, I start to apply more pressure. At the temperature, they are producing 38 liters, around 38 liters. They are producing between 38 and 40 liters, more or less, at the barn. Bedding management is usually done twice a day. The milking schedule is used to perform the work, where initially a sinsel pass is made to aerate the bedding, and after that, a rotavator pass is made. This is done once in the morning and once in the afternoon. This dairy farm has two daily milkings, and we take advantage of when the cows go out for milking to do this type of work. This allows us to aerate the bedding and promote the fermentation process. The key is daily management, that sinsel and rotavator pass, and nothing more. And try to maintain a certain load, not exceed that load, because the cows themselves, with their manure and nothing more, moisten the bedding. Here in this establishment, two veterinarians work. I am an agronomist in charge of the feeding part. In addition, two veterinarians work here. One handles the reproductive part, and another veterinarian handles everything related to postpartum phase 3 fresh cows. And the podiatry part is done by an external person. This person is external to the establishment. They are hired once a month when there are certain problems, but it is not a permanent staff member who works here at the establishment. Generally, the hoof care is preventive or corrective, and the preventive care is done weekly with a product for that purpose, in a foot bath at the exit of the milking parlor. The cow passes through the product once a week, and that prevents issues. If any correction is needed, or if a hoof is somewhat complicated, we call the professional, and they come to do the work. Well, as I mentioned earlier, the base of the diet is corn silage, and the second forage that occupies the most proportion in the diet is alfalfa. This area is a major producer of alfalfa, and we use it in two ways. One way is by cutting the alfalfa, letting it air dry, drying it until it reaches around 15% moisture, and then collecting it with a machine that produces these mega bales. The peculiarity of this forage is that the same machine makes a pre-cut of about 7 centimeters. The other way to reserve alfalfa is through silage, where the plant is cut, given a short pre-drying, to approximately 35%, 38% to 40% dry matter, and then collected with a chopper, the same one used for chopping corn silage and stored in the bag as such. What is purchased within this establishment is everything that is concentrated, especially protein, and the corn grain is produced and used on site. All the protein part that makes up the diet is purchased from certain local suppliers, specifically soybean meal and cottonseed, which are two ingredients, with cottonseed used as a supplement to maintain or increase the solids content in the milk composition. Remember that this establishment produces milk here and does not market it like most others, but has a separate business unit where that milk is processed, in addition to purchasing from other establishments. This is where all the concentrates are stored. We call these cells, where we have a cell for each raw material. What we have back here is soybean meal, which is a protein source we are using for the production cows. Another protein source we use is protected soybean meal, which is used only for high production cows, all of which are in the barn. Here in this cell, we store soybean meal. In another cell, we have ground corn. In another, cotton seed. And there is a third cell for making a premix. What is a premix? A premix is based on the concentration needed for each diet, mixing corn, cotton seed, and soybean meal, and used for all categories. A premix is made in advance, stored in a cell, and then the pre made premix is loaded directly. It's not that an ingredient is loaded as needed, no. A premix is made and used in a fixed dose for most herds. And then, for the herds inside the barn, protected soybean meal is added. Well, El Moncho Farm, de dedicated solely to dairy farming, has around 480 hectares where all the forage, such as corn silage, 
alfalfa silage and alfalfa hay is produced. Additionally, all the corn consumed by the dairy is produced on this land. As mentioned earlier, this dairy annually fluctuates between 420, 430, 450 cows, depending on the time of year, and between 13 and 15,000 liters of milk daily, depending on the number of cows. The peculiarity of this establishment is that it only produces milk here. This establishment does not have rearing facilities. Once the cow calves, the calf is weaned and sent to another facility for rearing. Once the heifer is about to calve, it is brought here and goes through the prepartum period at this establishment. In conclusion, this establishment has dry cows, prepartum cows, and production cows. Currently, we are doing two milkings a day, starting around 3 a.m. and the second milking at 3 p.m. You mentioned that the milk production is not sold to the dairy. How does that work? This particular company has two productive units. One is the dairy farm for milk production, and the other is an economic unit for milk processing. The second economic unit processes all the milk produced here, as well as milk purchased from other producers in the area. This establishment also has another milk production facility with a slightly different system. It is a more pasture-based, semi-pasture system with a partially mixed diet where the cow spends half the day consuming the TMR in a dry lot system and the other half in a pasture system. As I mentioned earlier, in Argentina, we are migrating from that type of system to these more intensive systems. Well, I think that's all. I hope you liked this video. Subscribe to the channel, give it a like, and see you next time.